What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to deflash and acclimate tissue call to plants. But first I need to go to my local hydroponic store to get some supplies. Alright, so I already have a sphagnum moss, so I'm not going to get this, but this is something that you, um, you probably want to get as it's very good on retaining some water. 10 by 20 germination trays are good to have, uh, as well as some uh, inserts. Um, Road wool is a great alternative to sphagnum moss as it retains a lot of water. Uh, germination domes are a moss uh, from moving tissue portal plants to soil. Some cocoa cores. Uh, fertilizers and clonex is great for for rooting um, um, clones netting pots are a great alternative compared to traditional pots as they allow more um, oxygen to go to the roots when the flasking tissue called to plants, you want to use a highly porous media. So you can use something like Promix HP, or you can make your own with vermicula, perlite, or, and pit moss. In my case, I want to work with carnivorous plants, so I want to take a bag of perlite. Take a look on all of those pH meters. I think it's time for me to upgrade my current pH meter to something more professional. The one I want to get uh, will have a separate probe, so I can use it on smaller bottles something like these two pH meters here on the bottom. I think I will get something similar to this. Right, so let's get started. Uh, so what I got here is New Zealand Spangler Moss. Uh, this is 40 liters. It looks very small, but this is actually 40 liters. Um, have a four cubic foot of a perlite. It's very coarse material stuff. Um, you don't have to be this fancy, uh, you can use um, pots and then use some like a seed bags. But in my case, I want to use um, um, a tray cell. So, humidity dome. This dome actually has the, um, how do you call it, uh, bends on it. So you can, whenever um, I want to put the plants in there, they want to be closed. But uh, after a few days, I want to open this uh, slowly uh, every um, couple of minutes every day uh, until I can keep it completely open and then after that I can completely remove the the, the dome and then leave the plants to acclimate to, to lower humidity. Um, cell tray and uh, this is a, a heavy duty um, 10 by 20 um, flat. All right, so first I want to make my, uh, mix uh, my, my uh, media into the, this uh, bowl. So just want to get started. Uh, when working with perlite, you probably want to use some, um, like a mass, uh, an N95, because it's very, very dusty. So use something to, now this, this thing is very coarse, you can see, really like it. So go for now, now using uh, the steel water, um, this is actually not steel water, it is um, arrow water from my arrow filter. So this media will be good for, not only for carnivorous plants, but also for, I think, any tissue culture in general, after they use get out tissue culture, because um, these plants are going to need a uh, lot of water. Uh, they're coming from pretty much 100% humidity. So I think sphagnum, goes, sphagnum moss is great for any plant. Okay, that's it. I think we're good to go. So 
So now I have to feel, this is the most painful process right here, used to fill everything up. But look at that, that was the perfect amount of uh, sphagnum moss and perlite. So now let's get started with the plants. Right, so we are ready to start moving the plants. And I already had the labels here and I have my plants from tissue quarter I want to be moving. So I want to start um, with um, a pinguicula. This is a, the plant I want to start with. And uh, the way I want to do is I have pinguicula, I have um, some very old cephalotus, um, Drosera capillaris. I have um, some very young, um, some very young Darlingtonia californica. I'm not sure how it's going to do. Um, we'll see. It doesn't have any roots uh, and also so quite quite warm in this room. So we'll see how it does, but. Going to get, give it a shot. I have a lot of this. Um, some very rough, very bad looking Venus fly traps that they've been in this media for so long, and I don't even going to bother it moving into fresh media. I just want to get it out. Yes, they are tiny, but it's okay. I also have a lot of this. And lastly, um, I want to use uh, an aquatic plant. I actually want to use. Some very rough looking S wrappings that I have here as well. I was I also have a lot of this stuff, so I want to see how it how it grows emerge um, when it is a this is an aquatic aquatic plant. So I want to see if it if it does well uh, in this setup. So let's get started with the pinguicula. The date on this is from October of um, 2020. So it's been here for a while. And some of these plants have been here for a long time. And a lot of these, they need new media badly. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of plants to, to deflash. Uh, a lot of these are actually very small, not really to the point where I want to deflash them, but uh, it's okay. I do have more plants. Um, I just want to, to show you the concept. So I'm going to move this to the side. Uh, I use my um, tissue corto forceps. So forceps are very useful to, to work with this. So what I'm doing here, taking this out, take the plant out. Um, pinguicula doesn't actually have any roots. Uh, it has very, very little roots. And what to do is I, Want to get rid of this gel because I want to use the the same uh, cup, the container to to rinse my other plants. What I want to do here is very carefully try to split them. I want to see how this going to work. Very very gentle. And I need 12. So we'll see. And I'm not going to break just every single plant. I just want to make it small clumps. So this is a very good plant to place in here. Look at all the dead plant material on the bottom. I want to remove all these dead leaves before I plant this. And even the, the, the leaves that have fallen up, you can just put place in here, they will make more plants. The pinguicula is very easy to grow from leaf pullings. Some people say it's actually pointless to grow them in tissue quarter because they use propagate so easily. But tissue you, you cannot beat um pinguicula from tissue quarter, they just grow so fast. You can you can start with one leaf. I love to grow pinguicula in tissue quarter because you can just start with one leaf and have thousands of plants in just a, a few months. There we go. So the pinguicula is ready. Let's move on to the next plant. 
All right, so the next plant is uh, Cephalotus, and this is a very old container, I think. Oh, oh I remember now. So this um, Cephalotus uh, is one of came, is from one of my first very videos. Actually, it's probably the first video I made. Um, and when I made that video, it was already one year old. Like I was, it was 13 months old. And that, that video was, what, about a year ago? So it's, this is about two years old. That it's been here. It doesn't have any media left. There is no media in here whatsoever. It's just a plant. I don't know how it's still alive. I mean, a lot of these are dead, but a lot of these still, still green, growing, so. I just want to place some of these plants. I probably don't want to take all of them. I just want to take small pieces. And then just place it in here. There we go. I think it, there we go. I think it's good. Um, I still have a lot, but I want to show you another method on how to how to put the plants in, in how to acclimate the plants. So I just want to save this for later. So next plant is. Glossera capillaris. Alright, next, Glossera capillaris. Glossera capillaris. I may have to wash this plant. Let's take a look how they look. Yes. Okay, I want to have to wash this. Very nice clumps. I'm going to place some water on this cup and give it a little, little wash. Next plant is Darlingtonia, this little guy. They are tiny. All right, next is a very rough looking Venus flight traps. Oh God, I don't know how they still alive. They don't look good at all. The good thing about Venus fly traps is that they grow by the rhizome. So even though they look very bad right now, I'm pretty sure they're going to make it and they'll be fine. It may take a little while, but I think they'll be fine. Let's see, so this is a hyper hydration. Let's see if we can make it focus now. Uh, it's not going to focus. Maybe. Let's see, so that's some hyperhydration there. And it's not going to make it. This is dead. Or it will be dead. All right, so last plant. Doing S wrappings. Oh, this looks horrible. And please don't think that all my plants look this rough. It's just that I don't have use for these plants anymore. So I just, why not use them? And just save these plants and put it into also tissue culture to see if they do anything. Here we go, all of the plants. The last thing to do is uh, place a humidity dome on top. Close the vents. All right, and we are 
we are pretty much done. The only thing to do is put this uh, under some uh, artificial lights um, and then I slowly acclimate, I slowly open this, um, these vents every few days, um, I'm sorry, every few, um, for a few minutes um, every day until they are ready. Uh, when you think they are ready, you take the whole, the whole dome and again for maybe a few minutes and then a few hours and and then you can use it slowly acclimate it, maybe put it into the shade outside and then until they can they can will stand the the full sun so i hope you have enjoyed it and i will see you next time Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying these tissue culture videos, be sure to follow us on social media for more informative content. And if you're interested in conducting your own tissue culture experiments, make sure to check us out at plantcelltechnology.com for all the products you need to get started. Use the code FP10 for 10% off your first purchase.